What's up guys? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Josh Fan of showmefootball.com as well as arrowheadaddict.com where I'm writing again a little bit of personal news. Um, I was at Arrowhead Addict a very long time ago for those of you that have followed me for a while. I went over to KC Kingdom, spent some time there, but I'm going back to Addict where I'm going to be writing about the Chiefs a heck of a lot more hopefully, but um, yeah, so go check out my work over there after you're done watching this. But I did want to make a video today because uh, I have some thoughts on my mind after, after that Bills game, you know, later this week and I've had more time to kind of soak in, you know, what happened, ha develop some more thoughts. I've listened to some of the other Chiefs content creators and their points and I've just, I've combined all that in my head and I just wanted to make a video kind of overseeing where the Chiefs are as a team right now, you know. I had a lot of things to say after the loss to the Bills and a lot of critical takes, um, but I believe a lot of my takes from our loss to the Bills go beyond just that game, and these are serious problems that we need to talk about. Um, we need to have a serious discussion about this team and who they are, especially since you know I mentioned that I've listened to a lot of the other Chiefs YouTubers and media members kind of um, put in their two cents, and after listening to them, I'm... Again, I have some new thoughts. So, let's just start with this. Right now, the Chiefs are in serious trouble. Um, you know, I was listening to Seth Kaiser on RGR Football last night. Um, if you guys aren't already subscribed to RGR Football, please go check him out. Um, he makes great content, and he's a big inspiration to me and why I started my channel. Um, but anyway, he had Seth Kaiser from The Athletic um, run his Thursday live stream last night. And Seth is one of the more optimistic guys in Chiefs Kingdom. If you know who he is, you know what I mean. Like he's he's a very upbeat guy. He's very positive. And even he said after that loss to the Bills, there was this moment where he went, you know what? This team, it's not invincible. He he was someone that had always said, you know, the Chiefs will figure it out because they're the Chiefs, and that's just what they've always done. They find a way to figure it out, and every time uh, they rise to the occasion and they prove that they're still a top of the AFC, but. Um, that loss against the Bills really made him rethink that. And it felt different. Like, the first couple losses this season, like, you could kind of explain them away and say, if this didn't happen or that guy was healthy, then, you know, the Chiefs would have won. And it's just been bad luck so far. It's been a tough schedule, blah, blah, blah. But this loss against the Bills was different. I mean, they straight up got their ass kicked by a better, more talented team. And Seth even acknowledged that. He said that, you know, this really felt like a time where the Chiefs need to look at themselves and go, you know what, maybe we're not the team that we thought we were. And this is what I've been saying for, you know, really essentially the start of the season. I like to come to my conclusions a lot earlier than a lot of people. Um, people will give stuff time. I just kind of tell it how I see it. And um, for the most part, I've been right um, about issues regarding the Chiefs, like, oh, I don't really like what this player brings to the team, or, you know, I don't, I, I don't think the Chiefs have a good defense, I don't think the defense is going to get fixed, whereas, you know, other people may hold out some hope. But, yeah, anyway, my point is that we need to look in the mirror as a fan base, um, the Chiefs need to look in the mirror as a team, and we need to admit that, this team isn't what we thought they were and they have a lot of holes and a lot of the other things that I'm about to say in this video are things that I've said here and there and other videos that I made but I'm just going to be putting it all together so just bear with me but one more thing I want to bring up is I am an avid listener of 610 Sports Radio um, The Drive uh, with Carrington Harrison um, every weekday from 2 to 6. Um, it's one of my favorite uh, Chiefs uh, radio personalities to listen to, um, Carrington is, and I, I love that show. But he was talking um, the other day about how uh, you know, he was debating with the listeners, you know, is the Chiefs window closed? Like, is their championship window closed? And what he meant by that is not necessarily like, you know, the Chiefs, they're not Super Bowl contenders anymore, because I think we can all agree that with Patrick Mahomes, they're always going to kind of be in that contending group. And at least we think that, right? Well, uh, he was debating with the listeners if he thinks, you know, that like that 2019 team we saw win the Super Bowl, like, is this that Chiefs team? Like, is that Chiefs core, that core of players that we have now, if this is making sense to you guys, is that window closed for this specific group? 
and I found that to be a very interesting discussion. Because with the way that things look right now, I mean, I don't even think the Chiefs are a top three team in the AFC, let alone a Super Bowl contender. Like, they're going to have to make some serious changes this offseason. Like, I've already come to accept the fact that this team is not a Super Bowl contender um, with the 32nd ranked defense in the entire league. And that's really where these issues start. You know, the defense. They, The defense is absolutely horrible. Um, I just... I don't know how you can be optimistic about the defense going from 32 to like 17. Like it's we're five weeks into the season. It's a big enough sample size now where it's like, okay, it's not like it it just took the first few weeks to shake the rust off or anything like no, They're just bad. And very, very rarely because let's acknowledge the statistic that the chiefs are tied for the longest streak in NFL history of giving up 29 or more points in each game through the first five weeks of the season they've given up 29 or more points they're the second team in history to do that Um, and if they give up 29 or more to Washington they will be off to the worst start by a scoring defense in NFL history very very rarely do you go from there to a top 15 defense or a top 20 defense even And with the way that other teams have caught up to the Chiefs and built their rosters to match up with the Chiefs, it's getting very, very hard for the Chiefs to go out there with the recipe of, look, our defense isn't going to be great, but we have Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, so they can save us and we'll end up pulling it out in the end. No, that, that, that can't be the strategy to winning anymore. I mean, the defense is just horrible at every level. They cannot get pressure on the quarterback for the life of them. Their linebackers are not athletic enough. They don't know where to be. And the secondary, some people are more hopeful about the secondary than I am. Um, Like Lucas Murphy from the Beat of KC, who I do the Kingdom Crew podcast with, he likes this secondary. I mean, Dan Sorensen is horrible. People think that if you swap Dan Sorensen out and put Juan Thornhill in there, everything will be fixed. I don't think that's necessarily the case. Um, For example, the Chiefs corners, every single one of them is giving up a 100 passer rating when targeted this year so far. There's not a single one that is allowing anything under 100. Um, A lot of that has to do with the pass rush, so maybe if the Chiefs pass rush steps up, it makes their job a little bit easier. Um, But I'm not over-enthusiastic about their corners either. And you can argue whether it's coaching or it's talent. I've had this debate with multiple people. I think it's a combination of both. I don't think anything can be pinned all on one guy like for example Steve Spagnuolo I think his defense is too complicated for these guys I think he doesn't let guys run and do what they do well a lot or enough Um, like Nick Bolton hasn't been great at Will Linebacker Um, he should just be splitting snaps with Anthony Hitchens at middle um, not with Willie Gay back or he just he, he, he can't play Will linebacker okay or Dan Sorensen like he needs to be benched like point blank Dan Sorensen has to be benched that's stuff like that from Steve Spagnuolo it frustrates me but it's not like the Chiefs have the greatest talent on defense either like Jerron Reed has been a complete no-show um, Frank Clark you guys know how I feel about Frank Clark um, Chris Jones is even on the injury report now and you know without him they're hopeless So a lot of this falls on Brett Veach. And if the defense continues to be bad, Brett Veach is going to be the first to take heat because he's the one that, I mean, I'm sure Andy Reid signed off on it, but he's the one that hired Steve Spagnuolo. He's the one that has drafted and or signed a lot of these guys on the defense. And a lot of people aren't willing to have an honest conversation about Brett Veach and the way he's built this roster. Every single time I try to be critical, I got people going, oh, how dare you talk about the man who brought us to -to back-to-back Super Bowls and got us to three straight AFC championship games. I mean, come on. That, it's not about what they did in the past. It's about creating longevity and maximizing your Super Bowl window. And if we're to have an honest conversation about Brett Veach, I think he's failed at that. I think he's missed on too many draft picks. He's whiffed on too many potential signings, and it's coming back to cost the Chiefs. And if we're being completely honest, this Chiefs team, John Dorsey, he mixed the batter together. He baked the cake. He designed the cake. He put the icing on it. Brett Veach just put the candles on the cake. I don't mean to discredit the Chiefs Super Bowl win in any way, and it was the greatest moment of my life to see them finally reach the mountaintop. But it took three historical comebacks 
and three straight games for this team to even pull off of that. And you can thank Patrick Mahomes for about 90% of it. And that type of football just isn't sustainable anymore for the Kansas City Chiefs. You are facing teams that are too talented. They've caught up to you. And you cannot, a lot of the Chiefs, if you go back and look at the Chiefs games from over the past two years, a lot of them are the Chiefs play down to their competition for three quarters. And then they have that one quarter where they just go off for like 21 or 28 points. And then that's the game. But the Chiefs have put themselves in a position where they're still hoping that they can do that and it just keeps resulting in losses the defense is so bad that you see the issues starting to spill over into the offense because Patrick Mahomes and the offense feel this immense pressure to score on every single drive or else they know they're done and it's unfair to Patrick Mahomes and quite frankly Brett Veach has botched the roster around Patrick Mahomes this is looking eerily similar to the 2013-2014 Seattle Seahawks. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that. Uh, I know Carrington talked about that on 610 Sports Radio, but um, they are eerily similar teams. In fact, I have a couple friends that are Seahawks fans that live in Kansas City um, that I went to the game with against the Bills, and we were talking about it on the car ride home. It, It is crazy how similar they both are. I'm sure both fan bases, I'm sure the Seahawks fan base at one point felt like they were on top of the world and they could do no wrong. They struck fire in an elite QB in Russell Wilson, and they had this great core of guys, um, a great defense, but then as soon as they started paying some of those guys, they paid Richard Sherman, they paid Cam Chancellor, they ended up having to pay Russell Wilson down the line. And they started being very, very bad with a lot of their early draft picks. They ended up taking Rashad Penny, an average running back in the first round. Hmm, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, does that sound similar? And the Seahawks never completely fell off to being a terrible team, but they were never that Super Bowl contender, um, invincible team that they once were ever again. And it really does feel eerily similar. I mean, I think that's the road the Chiefs are heading down currently. Call me crazy, but I, I feel like that's what we're watching unfold. The Chiefs have missed on too many draft picks, they've missed on too many signings, and it's allowed other teams to catch up to them because you have to, in order to stay competitive and stay on top, hit on these draft picks. And Brett Veach's hit rate just isn't very great. You know, I asked this question on a couple of my other videos. Um, What players has Brett Veach drafted that you would say right now deserve a lucrative second contract beyond their rookie deal? There's maybe one or two you feel like would deserve one in the next few years, and that's just not good enough. Um, If you look at the core of players that are truly, truly great on this Chiefs team, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, Chris Jones, Tyron Matthew, that's the group, okay? And Brett Veach brought in one of those guys, and that was Tyron Matthew, a free agent signing. He has not changed the nucleus of this team at all since he's been here. And that has to be better. He drafted Breland Speaks with his first overall pick in 2018. He traded for Frank Clark and gave him $100 million. Then drafted McCole Hardman, who they then signed Josh Gordon over. He drafted Juan Thornhill, who can't seem to get on the field. He drafted Clyde Edwards-Hilaire with the first pick in 2020. He paid Anthony Hitchens four years, $45 million. At some point... Those misses catch up with you. Now, yeah, Brett Veach has hit on some later round picks, but, you know, this team, they're going to start needing contributions from their big investments. You cannot keep relying on fourth and fifth round picks to be your main guy, like Mike Dana, for example. He's a fine piece. He's a fine player. They're asking him to be their number two defensive end, and that's just not who he is. He's not that guy. And really, Brett Veach, people give him all this credit for rebuilding the offensive line. But, you know, he only rebuilt the offensive line when it was too big of an issue to ignore. I felt like they should have invested in it sooner. They drafted Colin Saunders, who's currently a fourth-string defensive tackle over Connor McGovern, O-lineman for the Cowboys, who looks amazing. They also took him over Dawson Knox, who just happened to kill you the other night. And... The Chiefs focus so hard on patching up this one hole on the offensive line that it seems like they ignored these five other holes that opened up. Like wide receiver two, we all thought that was an issue for the longest time. What did they do to improve that? They went for Josh Gordon after four weeks into the season, and he may or may not work out. Um, Defensive end, 
their solution to that was to sign Jerron Reed, who got cut from the Seahawks, and then move their best defensive tackle out to defensive end, which made him a worse player, ultimately. And they had Melvin Ingram in the building, let him walk. He went to the Steelers for dirt cheap. The next day, they turn around and sign Alex Okafor, who is a non-factor. This stuff catches up. You know why the Buccaneers are so good? Because they built that roster the right way. Their secondary is decimated right now, so they've looked a little vulnerable at times. But once they get those guys back, um, like Carlton Davis and Sean Murphy Bunting and guys like that, you know, they should start to look a little bit better. But they have a pass rush. You know, they always had a pass rush. Whenever the Bucks were seven and five last year, the Chiefs fans uh, like to compare um, this Chiefs team and their rut to the Buccaneers. They were seven and five, and they figured it out. Well, you know what? They didn't have a historically bad defense. They had the pieces in place. They were just working on it coming together. This team does not have a defensive line that's capable of what the Bucks are capable of doing. That's why they were able to turn it around. The Bucks have a great offensive line. They have a great receiving core. They were able to stack up in this last NFL draft because they didn't have a lot of weaknesses. They took Joe Tryon with their first pick in the draft. Joe Tryon looks like a beast right now for them. I'd gladly take him over Frank Clark. Stop letting local analysts and Sunshine Pumper Chiefs fans tell you guys that you're not allowed to be upset about this team. You have every right to be upset that this team is fielding a historically bad defense with Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. We all thought this team was a Super Bowl contender going into the year, and they are 2-3 and three through five weeks. They are a Washington football team loss away from the wheels coming off. The division is at stake, too. Like, I don't think you guys understand. The Chargers look really freaking good. They're legit, and they already have a win over the Chiefs, so they could win the tiebreaker, too. The Chiefs are going to have to rattle off like six or seven in a row um, to even get out of this hole right now. And that just looks unlikely with the Dallas Cowboys and Green Bay Packers coming up on the schedule. Heck, I'm not even sure the Tennessee Titans are an automatic win. This team just isn't playing like it. And I just don't know how you could hold out hope that the defense is somehow just going to get better. They're going to bring themselves to 20 or 19th in the league in total defense. And Brett Veach may have to make a move at the deadline. I mean... It, it's it's a rough time for the Chiefs. It really is. Um, you know, if they even make it to the playoffs, assuming they make it to the playoffs, or even the Super Bowl, you know, I don't see them winning if they can't get pressure on the opposing team's quarterback and they can't get a freaking stop because they can't stop a nosebleed right now. I think the Buffalo Bills showed that they're the team to beat in the AFC and the Chiefs aren't this big, bad competitor anymore that everyone is afraid of. No one's afraid of the Chiefs anymore. You know, you're seeing teams go for it on fourth down and a considerable amount um, against the Chiefs defense. They have no respect for this defense, and they shouldn't. There's a lot of blame to go around. Um, I think it starts at the top, though, with Brett Veach. I think his roster-building tactics to this point is a huge reason the Chiefs are in the position that they are now. They just haven't hit enough. They haven't. And it's allowed teams to catch up. Argue with me in the comments. Go ahead. Um, that's all I got for this video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so more Chiefs fans can find this. And check out my work on showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com. See ya.